Hi, I'm Joe James, and this is the fourth video in our linear equation series. In this video, we're going to work through a variety of different word problems for linear equations. You're going to see how to apply what you've learned in linear equations to solve a whole bunch of different problems. And if you're preparing for the SAT or the ACT, this is going to be an excellent practice for you because these are typical problems that you might see on one of these standardized tests. So let's dig in and solve some problems. So in problem number one, we're given two points on the coordinate plane, 6 comma 2 and 11 comma negative 4, and we need to find the shortest distance between them. So we're going to solve this using the Pythagorean theorem. Now in case you're not familiar with the Pythagorean theorem, I'll walk through that real quick and see how we apply it. So we're given a right triangle, let's say that looks like this, and this is a right angle here, a 90 degree angle, and we'll call this side A and this side B, and this side C. C is the hypotenuse, it's the longest side of the right triangle. That's called the hypotenuse. So uh, what Pythagorean theorem states is that given a right triangle with sides A, B, and C, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So we want to find the distance between these two points one point here and one point here. So the distance between them is the length of side C, right? Um, so we can find the length of side C if we know the lengths of side A and B. So what we're going to do is determine the lengths of side A and B. So A, you can see, is the horizontal component of the distance between them, right? And B is the vertical component. So uh, the difference between the x values, 6 and 11, um, is the length of side a. So a equals 6 minus 11. And of course, we're going to take the absolute value of that. We want the positive since it's a distance. Um, 6 minus 11 equals, well, it's negative 5, but we're going to write 5 because it's a length or a distance, so it has to be positive. So the, the length of side A is the horizontal component of the distance between the two points, the horizontal component, or the x component, right? That's just the difference of these two x coordinates of the two points. And we're going to do the same thing to get side B. So B equals, um, let's see, 2 minus a negative 4, minus negative 4, Look, we have two negative signs there, so those cancel each other out, and it becomes a 2 plus 4, which is 6. So now we know what side B is. Side B is 6, side A is 5. So now we can use this Pythagorean theorem to calculate the distance between the two points, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we'll say c squared equals 5 squared plus 6 squared, and that's equal to... 25 plus 36, which is equal to 61. So c is equal to the square root. We take the square root of both sides, right? The square root of c squared is just c. The square root of 61 is the, uh, is the distance between those two points. So the square root of 61 is 7.8, and that's our answer. That's the length of side C, which is the distance between the two points. Let's try another one like that. Here we have points 12, 8 and 4, 3. We're going to make a right triangle out of this where we side A is the x side of the right triangle and side B is the y side of the right triangle. If it helps you to visualize this, we can, we can do a quick sketch of what these look like on the coordinate plane. Uh, let's see, 4, 3, let's say 4, and then up 3 is about here. And then 12, 8 would be, you know, 12, 8 would be up here. So what we're looking for is this distance between the two points. And what we're going to find is the dis difference in x values, the difference in y values, and then we have a right triangle, so we can use um, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that's what we're doing, what it looks like on a coordinate plane when you plot those two points. So let's see, a is the x-coordinate for us, 12 minus 4. 
we're looking for the, the length of this side A, this bottom horizontal side here, which is 12 minus 4. And that is 8. And side B is, um, let's see, 8 minus 3, which is 5. So now we know what these two sides are. Side A is 8, and this side is 5. So to get side C, we just have to square those and then take the square root. So C, according to the Pythagorean theorem, equals, well, C squared equals 8 squared plus 5 squared. And let's see, 8 squared is 64, 5 squared is 25, so that is 89 added together. And then when we take the square root of that, we take the square root of both sides, we get c equals the square root of 89, which is 9.4. So our answer here is 9.4. So given a segment on the coordinate plane with endpoints 1, 9, and 7, 3, what are the coordinates of the midpoint? In other words, we have a coordinate plane like this. We have two points on it, let's say here and here, and we're looking for the midpoint, or the distance that is halfway between those two. Uh, the way we're going to find that is just by taking the average of the two x values to find the average x, and the average of the two y values to find the average y, right? So here we have an x and a y coordinate for this point and an x and a y coordinate for this point. We're gonna find an x and a y coordinate for that midpoint just by adding these two x coordinates together and divide by two. So the x average, we'll call it x bar, is equal to one plus seven, one plus seven divided by two. That gives us the average of those two numbers. So the average of the x-coordinates is, let's see, 8 over 2, that's 4. So the, the x-coordinate of this midpoint is 4. And then the y-average is uh, 9 plus 3 divided by 2. Let's see, that's 12 divided by 2, that is 6. So the average x value is 4, the average of the two y values is 6. So the midpoint is 4, 6. So that is our midpoint. Let's see, here's another one. We're given two endpoints and we have to find the midpoint. So again, all we need to do is take the average of the x values, the average of the y values. Let's see, x average is 12 plus 4 divided by 2. And by 2, that is, what, 16 divided by 2? So that's 8. So the x-coordinate is 8 for the midpoint. And then the y-average is um, negative 3 and positive 3. Negative 3 plus 3 divided by 2. And negative 3 and positive 3 adds up to 0. So 0 divided by 2 is still 0. So there are our x and y coordinates for the midpoint. The, uh, the midpoint is going to be at 8, 0. OK, now we're given two points on the coordinate plane, and we're asked uh, in questions 5, 6, and 7 to find the shortest distance between them, the slope of the line that passes through both points, and the midpoint of the segment that connects them. So in other words, we've done all problems like all three of these already, but we're given two points and we're asked to find all three of these. So let's first find the distance between them, number five. Uh, let's see, the distance between them, we said we're going to do um, negative five minus three to find out what that length of that x side is, right? We're gonna use Pythagorean theorem for that. So a equals negative 5 minus 3, so that's negative 8. But since it's um, the length of a side of a triangle, it obviously can't have a negative value, so it's really just 8. And then side B, 
which is the length of the y side, the vertical side, is 1 minus 8, or negative 7. So 1 minus 8 is negative 7, but we're just going to use 7 because uh, the length of a side of a triangle can only have a positive value. It's a distance. So we've got our two sides, right? Well, c squared is equal to 8 squared plus 7 squared plus 7 squared. And that's 64 plus 49. So this equals 113. And then the square root of both sides, we're going to get c equals 10.6. So that's number five. The shortest distance between them is 10.6. Now let's look at number six. Um, we'll do that here in the middle. The slope of the line that passes through them. Do you remember the equation for slope? That's m equals y1 minus y2 over x1 minus x2. That's our formula for slope. Whoops, let's call that a 1, minus x2. And when we plug those in, we get, uh, let's see, y1 is 1 minus 8, okay, 1 minus 8. And then x's are negative 5, negative 3, okay, which is, um, let's see, that gives us negative 7 over negative 8, which is 7 eighths. So our slope is 7 eighths. Let's look at problem number 7 here. The midpoint of the segment that connects them. Well, for the midpoint, we just said we need to get the average of the x's and the average of the y's. So the average x value is um, the sum of x1 and x2 divided by 2. So negative 5 plus 3 divided by 2, and let's see, that gives us a negative 2 divided by 2, so that's going to give us negative 1. And then y average is 1 plus 8 divided by 2. Let's see, 1 plus 8, um, that's 9 halves. So that's the x-coordinate, that's the y-coordinate. So we could write this in coordinate form as negative 1, 9 halves. That's the midpoint. So that's our answer for number 7. So there we go. We've done three different problem types all on the same two points. Let's work through another set of problems uh, just like those on another set of points, so you'll, you'll get the hang of this. You can skip over these if you feel like uh, you already know this. So what is the shortest distance between these two points? So let's see, number eight first. The, we're looking for the side A here is 11 minus three, which is eight. We'll go a little faster. Side B is equal to um, one minus four, or four minus one, since we really want positive absolute value of it is 3. So side c squared is equal to uh, 8 squared plus 3 squared, which is 64 plus 9. Um, that's 73, square root of 73. So this distance is square root of 73 which is 8.5. So there's our answer for number eight. Let's take a look at number nine. The slope of the line that passes through both points. Uh, okay, so again, we're gonna use our same equation we used before, y1 minus y2. That's one minus four, right? One, that's right, m equals one minus four over difference of x's. Um, 11 minus 3, and that's equal to negative 3 over 8. So that's our slope. And problem number 10, the midpoint of the segment. 
And so for this, we just want the average x and the average y. x average is 11 plus 3. That's 14 divided by 2, right? 11 plus 3 divided by 2. That's 7. And the average y is 1 plus 4 divided by 2. And that's 5 halves. So the midpoint is at 7 comma 5 halves. So that's problems 8, 9, and 10 done. Hopefully you've got the hang of this now. Let's move on to a different problem type. Problem 11. Bruno buys 20 shares of Google stock for $1,150 each and he pays a $10 transaction fee. What is his total cost? Well, so the $10 transaction fee you pay no matter how many shares you buy. So whether it's one share or a thousand shares, that's the, basically the fixed portion of the transaction. Uh, and then this is the variable cost that you pay, keyword here, each, right? We need to convert this to an equation so that we can figure out his total cost. This is each. That means that's a clue that we're going to be multiplying this 1150 by the number of shares. Let's call his number of shares x. So his total cost, let's put uh, t for that as our variable. t equals $10 is our fixed cost plus 1150 times the number of shares he bought, right? 1150 each. So 1150 times the number of shares. Let's just call that x. So what is his total cost? Well, he bought 20 shares. The total cost is going to be equal to 10 plus 1150. Now we have an equation we can put in any value for x. And he bought 20 shares this time. So we'll just put in 20 for that. And then when we multiply this out, we get 10 plus, um, let's see, 1150, that's um, $23,000 plus 10. And that equals 2 three comma o one o so twenty three thousand and ten dollars so note that when you're solving word problems like this you should always try and figure out what exactly are you trying to find here what we're trying to find is his total cost and that's usually going to be the variable that we put on the left we put t for this his total cost what are we given well we're given twenty shares this $10 transaction fee, and the $11.50 per share. And then how can we make an equation? That's basically the process we went through when we solved this problem. We wrote out an equation for it, and then we solved the problem. Okay, number 12, moving right along. Jeremiah buys X shares of Apple stock for $205 each, and then he pays a $10 transaction fee. Write an equation for his total cost. We can also use T for his total cost again. And the $10 transaction fee is his fixed price, no matter what. He has to pay that cost no matter what. So it's going to be $10 plus $205 each, right? So $205 times the number of shares that he bought. So $205. And the variable they give us here is X. They even tell us to use X. So we'll call it 205X. So T equals, total cost equals 10 plus 205 times x. So that's our equation right there. And there's a part two of this problem. Uh, if Jeremiah spent a total of 2265 on the shares, how many shares did he buy? So t is equal to 2265, right? They're telling us t is 2265. That's his total cost. Find x. x is the number of shares he bought. So we can put in 2265 for t equals 10 plus 205x. And then we'll solve for x. What we're looking for is the number of shares he bought. So here what we're going to do is get rid of this 10 first. We'll subtract 10 on both sides, minus 10. And we're going to get 2255. 2255 equals 205x. And then we just need to um, divide both sides by 205. x equals 2255 divided by 205, which is 11. So he got 11 shares. 
Maria pays a $12 admission charge to the carnival, plus $2 per ride. Your clue here is per ride. That tells us that the number of rides she rides, we don't know that, but um, that's going to be a variable. And then she's going to pay $2 times that. And the $12 is obviously a fixed price that she pays to get in. So if she rides zero rides or 100 rides, it's always going to be a $12 fixed admission price. So write an equation for her total cost to ride in rides. So total cost, we'll use the variable t again. She has this fixed $12 admission to get in no matter what, plus the number of rides she rides. So there's $2 for each ride times in rides. So 2 times in. Total cost is equal to $12 plus 2 times in, 2 times the number of rides she rides. And the second part of the question here is if she went on 4 rides, how much did she pay total? Well, let's see, she went on 4 rides. So if we put in number of rides is in, so if we put in 4 for that, t equals 12 plus 2 times 4, right? This is equal to 8, and 12 plus 8, uh, let's see, that equals 20, doesn't it? So she paid a total of $20 if she went on four rides. So number 14 here, 8 less than 5 times a number is 42. What is the number? Huh? Okay, I hate problems like these. But look, what we have to do is just try and put this into an equation, and then we can solve the equation mathematically. So don't think too much about the wordiness of it. Let's see. Is 42, that means equals 42. So 42 equals... 8 less than 5 times a number. 5 times a number is basically 5n, right? 5n. And then what is 8 less? 8 less than 5 times a number. Minus 8, isn't it? So 8 less than 5 times a number. 5 times a number is 5n. Minus 8 is 8 less. And equals 42. So now we have an equation... 8 less than 5 times the number is 42. What is the number? Well, well, now we just need to solve for n. So we can do that by adding 8 to both sides. Plus 8. Let's see, now we got 50 on the left. Equals 5n. And then the next step is to just divide both sides by 5, so we can get n by itself. We're solving for n. Divide this by 5. And what we get is n equals 10. So the number is 10. So we'll do another one similar to that. 6 more than 8 times a number is 86. So let's write 86 equals 6 more than 8 times a number. 8 times a number, we could write that as 8n, right? 8 times a number is 8n. And 6 more than that is going to be plus 6, isn't it? 6 more than 8 times a number, 8n plus 6 is equal to 86. Um, so let's see, now we just want to subtract 6 from both sides. We have an equation, so we'll just solve the equation. Minus 6. Once we get this as an equation, it's a lot easier to solve mathematically. So those cancel each other out, and here we get 80 equals 8n. And then we divide by 8 to get rid of that 8. Those cancel out. Divide by 8. So we get n equals 80 over 8, which, uh, guess what? That's the same answer as the last problem, is 10. So n equals 10. Tom bought a soft drink for $4 and 7 candy bars. Hmm, he spent a total of $18. How much did each candy bar cost? So let's see, he spent $4 on a soft drink, plus... 7 candy bars. So 7 times however much a candy bar costs. We'll call that x. x is the price of a candy bar. 4 plus 7x equals what? Uh, let's see, he spent a total of $18. So he spent $18, $4 on a soft drink, plus 7 candy bars at x dollars each. So that's how much he spent total. Let's see, now to solve this, all we got to do is subtract 4 from both sides. Subtract 4 over here. 
and we're going to get 14 equals uh, 7x and we divide both sides by 7 we get x equals 2 so the price of each candy bar is two dollars okay this is our last problem on Monday, 517 students went on a trip to the zoo. All nine buses were filled and four students had to travel in cars. How many students were in each bus? Huh, 517 students, 517 equals, let's see, nine buses were filled, but we don't know how many people were on each bus. So nine times however many people fit on each bus. So we'll call that X. X people fit on one bus. Plus four people have had to go in cars because they couldn't fit on the bus. So we'll call, we'll see, plus four here. Those are the four people who rode in the cars. So nine buses times X, the number of people who fit on a bus, plus four people who rode in cars. Now we'll solve this problem. We have the equation written out here. It'll be a lot easier to solve. Minus four on both sides. We get what? 513 equals 9x. And then we divide both sides by 9. x equals 57. 57 people fit on one bus. I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please click the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'm Joe James. Thanks for watching.